The last section of the exhibition looks at kimono fashions um, in the second half of the 20th century up to the present day. In the post-war period, the wearing of actual kimono in Japan declined dramatically as people rebuilt their lives, their homes and their wardrobes after the devastation of the Second World War. They tended to wear Western style garments increasingly rather than kimono. And this is when you see kimono shifting from what had been a fashionable garment worn every day by everyone into a codified form of costume that came increasingly to symbolize uh, Japanese-ness in a globalized world. People would wear kimono for events that mark the different stages of life. When you were a baby and you were taken to a Shinto shrine for the first time, other occasions when you visited shrines when you were young, or when you came of age and when you turned uh, 20. And weddings, it was still quite popular to wear uh, historic kind of style of garments for weddings, the white for the ceremony, or the very lavishly coloured ones uh, for the party afterwards. The Second World War, of course, brought defeat and destruction to Japan. In the Allied occupation that followed, Japanese culture became increasingly Americanized. This was of a worry to the Japanese government, who feared that historic techniques and historic crafts would start to decline. So in the 1950s, they promulgated various laws that allowed for the protection uh, both of tangible uh, cultural properties such as buildings, but also intangible cultural properties such as uh, particular techniques of weaving and dyeing. The most skilled practitioners of those techniques are often given the title that we call popularly living national treasures, such as Moriguchi Kunihiku. He studied graphic design in uh, Paris, so his designs really, they don't have the sort of historic motifs that we associate with kimono. And Yamaguchi Gembei, who's the 10th generation head of an obi purveyor in Kyoto, is working on numerous projects. Uh, this one here is part of a project to rediscover hemp. Hemp has always been used in Japan. This kind of linen-like fabric really suits Japan's hot climates. The wonderful designers of the exhibition, Story Studio, have created amazing environments for the actual displays. And in the last section of the exhibition, they've designed a sort of futuristic garden around the central plinth here, with this incredible tree in the middle. Whereas earlier in the exhibition, we've counterposed what's happening in Japan with what's happening in the rest of the world. Here, we combine uh, the garments. There's been a real renaissance of kimono wearing in the last 15 or 20 years in Japan, and that's one reason why we thought this was a very good moment to have an exhibition. This really started on the street with the restyling of vintage garments by young Japanese who perhaps didn't have the same associations with the garment as their parents or their grandparents might have had. They were also consciously reacting against the ubiquity of fast fashion and the fact that every shop you go into anywhere in the world sells the same kind of thing. This has really led to a new wave of designers in Japan. Uh, many uh, young independent studios who make kimono made out of cotton or digitally printed uh, polyester, such as the design here by Iroka, which appeal to a younger generation which aren't quite as, as expensive as more formal garments, but they're still uh, beautifully made. And the idea is that you might wear a kimono for many, many years, restyling it. The dichotomy between East and West, traditional avant-garde, male and female, don't really work when we look at how fashion actually functions. Certainly it doesn't reflect the complexity of the way that fashion crosses um, cultural and geographic borders. The Japanese kimono continued to inspire designers around the world. This wonderful belted uh, coat by Duru Olowu, who's a Nigerian-born, London-based designers, who uh, very much uses, sort of starts with the uh, textile to create uh, kind of garments here with a sort of sash waist and the wonderful square sleeves. At the front here we have Tom Brown, the celebrated New York designer, um, very famous for his suits. So he's not using the kimono um, form here as his inspiration, but the way that the pattern crosses across the surface. This fabric has been particularly made for him in Japan. We have another seminal piece from John Galliano's 2007 uh, collection for Christian Dior. Here we have this sort of wonderful layering, which you also see in kimono, and this incredible sort of enormous uh, 
coat, which is like a sort of Dior swing coat combined with an outer kimono worn over this sort of slim uh, undergarment. The image of the kimono often comes to us through the medium of film, particularly those by the famous Japanese film director Kurosawa. And the v &A has in its collection this garment, this ensemble, which was worn by Mifuni, the great Japanese actor, in the role of Sanjiro. George Lucas, the American director, um, has often spoken of his debt to Kurosawa in the creation of his Star Wars films. The character of Obi-Wan Kenobi is part Buddhist monk, part fearless samurai. And that can even be seen even in the garment that he wore, which is styled on the kimono, designed by uh, John Muller and worn very famously by Alec Guinness. The very timelessness of kimono, that kind of ambiguity, seems to have made it very popular with performers who can play with ideas of their identity and their agenda through the wearing of the garment. Freddie Mercury very famously wore kimono on stage in the 1970s. And this garment here is actually, was actually owned by him, but was worn at home. In the center here, we have uh, the ensemble worn by Madonna for her video, Nothing Really Matters, uh, a sort of mini, uh, kimono worn with shorts but with again with these wonderful sleeves and this obby like sash and designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier. The Icelandic singer Björk is known for her experimental music and avant-garde style and for her uh, the iconic image that adorned her homogenic album created by Nick Knight. She wore this garment uh, created by Alexander McQueen. Collaborations have always been an important part of the design world. This is perhaps a kimono that will surprise people because this is designed by Yoji Yamamoto. We don't particularly associate him uh, with kimono design, but he produced a, a series of garments for the Kyoto firm Chiso, who've been producing textiles in Kyoto for 450 years. He really thinks that anyone can wear a kimono now and Yoji Yamamoto's advice is just to style up a kimono any way you like. After all, it's just a thing to wear. And of course, that is what kimono means, a thing to wear. So from the sophisticated culture of 17th century Kyoto to the creativity of the contemporary catwalk, the kimono has been subject to both local and global reinvention, earning it a fascinating place in the story of international fashion.